Hey everybody, Brandon Boyd with The Brandon Boyd Show. Thank you so much for watching. This is going to be a very fun show today because I'm going to be reviewing my recent six-night stay at Ventana Big Sur. This is a Hyatt property that recently changed from a Category 7 to a Category 8, and we're going to get through a lot of the details of this property, tell you the good, the bad, and everything in between. Make sure that you check the description down below, and you'll find timestamps for pretty much any topic you can think of related to this property. So this video is a little long, but you can skip around and find what you're really interested in taking a look at. Before we get started, if you do find this video helpful or mildly entertaining, don't forget to be awesome give me a big thumbs up on the video and subscribe to the channel hit the bell notifications for alerts we stayed here for four nights at 30,000 points when it was a category 7 property and a couple of weeks before we were set to leave we decided to add a couple of more nights and by that time it had turned into a category 8 property so it was 45,000 points for the two nights for a total of 210,000 points altogether but hey we didn't pay for anything we also had our flights covered with miles so that helped out as well if we had not paid with points and instead paid with cash this trip was going to run us nearly $20,000. Now at the end of the video I'm going to discuss if this resort is worth that kind of price, but we're going to go through it and talk about it first. This is an all-inclusive property with your food, so you can eat as much as you want. And we stopped at Target on the way uh, and picked up some alcohol to bring here because you do have to pay for your alcohol. So I recommend stopping uh, at a local market, picking up any drinks that you may want to bring with you and bring those onto the property. That way you don't have to pay for every single drink or cocktail that you may want to have by the pool. Trust me, you won't be the only one doing that. So this first place that we're inside here is the main entrance and this is called the social house. This is where you'll find merchandise. One of the really interesting pieces here is they have a record collection. You can actually check these records out and take them up to your room. Our room had a record player in it, so you can listen to everything from Tom Petty to Dr. Dre. And if you're like me, you'll throw in a little Led Zeppelin. I actually did take that one up to my room. Now they had some merchandise. My wife was a little disappointed in the hat selection because in the back there's not a place to have the ponytail come out. I don't know much about hair, so just overlook me. But we wish there was a hat selection there that allowed for ponytails. In the other half of the social house, you'll find a more social area. And this is where you're gonna find board games. There were some pretty intense games of Scrabble in here. There were actually people playing Scrabble while I was shooting this video clip right here. I didn't get them on there. But you can also come in and shoot pool as well. They have music playing. And it's a pretty relaxing atmosphere overall. It's also worth mentioning that when they are available, you can check out a Yeti cooler and a backpack for your trip here. So you don't actually have to bring those things with you. And the backpacks came in handy when we went hiking. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. But the cooler was also very helpful to have by the pool. So I recommend doing that. All right, now let's head inside for our room tour. And there's going to be a lot to cover in the room tour here. The rooms themselves, I think you'll be very impressed with overall we were certainly impressed and when you look at the outside door you think oh my goodness these are going to be old they look older but that's kind of the feel of the whole property but then when you get inside and take a look it's actually very very nice let's look around here on the back side of the door this is really helpful so they actually include a set of walking sticks uh, if you want to do some hiking either on the property or off the property that's one less thing that you'll have to pack with you because they already have them here and trust me with some of the hiking adventures uh, on and off property you will find those useful uh, we went on a pretty long hike that i'll talk about later on in the video where we didn't have them with us and we wish we would have let's get a close-up of the body lotion here this is by body bliss of sedona that sounds good. It actually was good. All the products that were in here were actually really good. We enjoyed them. In the container here, you've just got some more extra items, uh, Q-tips and such. One other thing that you do not have to pack, if we unpack this, is a hair dryer. So there is a hair dryer. I know a lot of people are always worried about overpacking or what am I supposed to pack with me. Well, there you go. You don't have to pack that. That should be a little bit helpful. Let's open up what's behind bag number two. What do we have inside? It's a steamer. It's a clothes steamer. So look, all those extra gadgets that you thought about packing with you, there's no need to do it um, because they're already here. The sink area was very large. It was just one sink, but it felt really big. You had a lot of space, and I actually prefer that setup, to be honest with you. These handmade soaps were awesome. Uh, they were in the room every day, and you are going to enjoy them. And if you forgot a toothbrush or toothpaste or mouthwash, hey, they've got you covered. Like I said, you don't really have to pack a whole lot when you come out here. They really take care of you and make sure that you have what you need. The shower, very large. I'm six foot two, I take up a lot of room. 
and the shower was very large. I was very happy with that. I wish the water pressure was a little bit better. Again, when you're paying cash price close to $20,000 for a six night stay, you would want a little bit better water pressure. I think we can all agree on that. One thing that Kayla really enjoyed and something that they replenished every single day because she used it every day were these bath salts. She absolutely loved these. And you can see that the bathtub area actually opens up to the bedroom area. It's one big open room. You don't feel very closed off when you're in here and that makes for a very nice atmosphere. It makes the room feel bigger overall. As far as closets go, there's nothing glamorous. There is a full length mirror which should help out a lot, but you're gonna have your standard fare here with your luggage stand, a robe, which is nice. You can have your robe here that has the Ventana branding on it. Moving on, you do have a big TV, and this was actually a pretty decent TV. I'm pretty critical when it comes to TVs, but underneath the TV, I thought this was very cool. The fireplace instructions. We got a lot of use out of this, and I highly recommend that you do this even if you're nervous about lighting a, uh, a wood fireplace, it's not bad at all. Trust me, they give you all the tools right there next to the fireplace to handle it. Literally, you throw this bag into the fireplace and it says, just light the bag. I was curious about this. I wanted to see if it was gonna work. So I took some of the included matches and started lighting the bag up. And it was very simple. Just like it says, all you have to do is just light the bag. So this is what it looks like after about uh, five minutes. And when you first light it, you will smell a little bit of smoke as it gets started, but that clears out pretty quickly once the fire gets established. And it doesn't take very long to do that at all. Also each evening as part of turndown service, they did leave a special gift uh, on the bed. And in one of the evenings they had sage. All right, there's a little story about the sage there. So why not take some of that sage and just throw it in the fire? I don't know, sounds like a pretty good idea. So we did that too. And they give you about three or four bags of these that they'll replenish every single day. And each one of those bags lasts for about, I don't know, an hour and a half. So you could sit there and just continuously throw bags in all evening, have you a fire, watch some TV, and just relax maybe with a cocktail as well and enjoy yourself. Trust me, make sure you do this. You will not regret it. So moving on from that again, just a very good view of the ceilings are very tall. You do have a ceiling fan. And one really unique piece that I found with this bed that we'll get to in just a second is this is one of the eight sleep mattresses. And if you're not familiar with this, it is very unique in the sense that it is connected to what is essentially like an air hose that helps to heat or to cool the bed. So if you like to sleep a little bit cooler, all you have to do is go to the screen that was on that phone that's actually attached to the stand. You go over, program your bed to either be heated or cooled with this unit that you can see right next to the bed. So if you like to sleep cool, turn it on a little bit cooler and trust me, it will cool off. And kids, this is a rotary phone, just so you know, this is educational. It took me a minute to remember how to use it, but it goes something like this but it's in the room. So if you do want to get in touch with someone, make sure you know how to use a rotary phone. You do have bed lights next to each side and you have several plugins as well on the side, which is really helpful and some mood lighting at the headboard, but plenty of space to work, set out your gadgets if you need to do that. And as we scan around, you do have a seating area here in the window. We didn't really use that as much. I didn't really find as much use for it, but it was decorative. That was pretty nice. And you can see the air unit there uh, right underneath that seating. It definitely does a good job of cooling things off because it was blistering hot while we were out there. These water containers also were a complimentary gift and we use these quite a bit. And it's very handy, especially if you're walking around the property or if you're out by the pool, because you can go to any of these water stations and it's automatically programmed to fill up to the 750 ml line which is what these bottles are. So it's very convenient. So you can pop those in and just get your water filled whenever you want it. As we continue scanning around, let's go over to one of my favorite areas and actually one of Kayla's too. There is an espresso machine. I don't drink coffee, okay? But she said that these are very good. So if you like Nespresso, there are some of the pods in here if you want to take advantage of that. As we open up underneath my favorite area, personally, there is a snack bar, a small snack bar. There's like granola bars, nuts, apple chips, but there's also gummy bears. One of those boxes right there is gummy bears and they were absolutely delicious. I love gummy bears. They will replenish those every day. And then you do have your drinks down here. You'll notice there's no alcohol inside. Again, alcohol is not included with the cost uh, of your stay. So, you know, they give you Coke, Diet Coke. The boxed water was very interesting. I'd never had boxed water before. 
So that was something unique, but something that we also utilized every day because again, it was so hot outside. You do have binoculars and this is important because you are out in the woods. You are out in nature. You're gonna wanna use those because you'll probably see something. And then there are some books and then your record player that I mentioned a little bit earlier. So if you did go grab one of those Dr. Dre records or a Tom Petty record, you can just throw it on there. It took me a few minutes to remember how to use a record player. Don't tell anybody, I know that's really embarrassing. But again, just like the rotary phone, practice, 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 so you don't look like an idiot when you get into the room. Moving on outside, the deck, it was average size, I would say, but it was covered and shaded, which is really all that mattered. You wouldn't want to be enclosed too much because at the end of the day, you come here for the views and the scenery, and if everything is too closed off, you don't really get to see it. I didn't use the deck a whole lot, but if you like good scenery, you can actually see um, some of the clouds back there right over the ocean. It's beautiful, and that's one of the big drawing points for this property. And you can also get room service if you want room service for an all-inclusive property is included. Speaking of grabbing food, I think it's time that we talk a little dining. First place we want to talk about is the Sir House. This is the main dining location for the property, and there are a couple of ways to get there, all right? First of all, you can take this trail. You can see it's marked for three-tenths of a mile. This takes about six to seven minutes, and it's an entirely gravel road. So if you're trying to wear heels, to go to dinner and walk this trail, you are gonna be in for it. It's gonna be a pain in the butt. You're gonna wear comfortable shoes when you do this or you will regret it. I saw a couple people nearly take stumbles as they were walking. So just make sure you're cognizant of your footwear if you are going to walk. However, I highly recommend that you call the front desk and ask them to use one of the shuttles to pick you up. Our dinner reservation was at 7.15 every evening and we chose that simply because it was a good time to catch the sunset and you do have to have a reservation every evening. So what we would do is we would have the shuttle come pick us up right outside of our room at 7.05 p.m. It took them five minutes to drive their cart over to the Sir house and it was very, very quick. You get out of the elements, so if it's super hot, you get out of the sun. If it's raining, you don't have to worry about getting wet on the walk back. Trust me, use the shuttle service. They do it all the time. You won't be the only one and you will be very thankful that you did it. As you arrive to the Sir house, there's a couple of different options for seating. Now this first one that we're gonna see is the indoor area. This was actually not utilized at the time we were there just because the weather was so perfect in the evening. It was in the 70s, it felt great, there was a light breeze. So they actually didn't have any staff in the inside area. It was all outdoor dining because when you are outside, there is literally not a bad seat in the house. So first you got a fireplace area, outdoor fireplace area. They don't have seats piled on top of one another. So you can walk around without feeling like you're elbowing every single person trying to get by. It's very open and airy. This is the view that you're gonna see when you go outside for dinner. Now, whether you're right at the edge like this seat is, or you're a little bit further back, it doesn't matter. You still get a view of everything. Now there is a happy hour every evening at 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. And I'm not really a huge fan of this. Let me explain why. First, as part of the happy hour, you get one cocktail for free. Okay, that's fine. That's, that's really good. However, if you stay out there, every cocktail thereafter is going to run about $25. And the problem with this is that the Sir House happy hour is at an odd time, number one, because it's not really close to dinner. And number two, it's kind of far away from the pool. So if you want to take yourself away from the pool and hot tub area, which we'll see here in a minute, you have to go all the way to the Sir House to get your one free cocktail and then, you know, have to go back and get back in the pool or whatever you want to do. I wish there was a happy hour around the pool area. That would have been very helpful, but maybe that's something they can think about adding later so you don't have to travel all that way just to try out a cocktail. As far as the food goes, I was very surprised. Let me just tell you, I've been to several all-inclusive resorts and many times the food is just okay. They serve you food that's just good enough to keep you happy for what you paid. In this instance, I felt like I was getting a pretty good value when it came to the quality of the food. We tried to get one of everything on the menu over the course of our six night stay. Some of our favorites, first of all, this chorizo and chickpea and whatever other mixture this is, this is an excellent side. I highly recommend this one. Kayla really enjoyed the scallops. She's pretty picky on scallops, so if she says they're pretty good, they must be pretty good. The Brussels sprouts were also good. And these sides are very big, so when you're ordering extra sides, just keep in mind that you'll probably just want to get one side extra 
for both of you to share, you know, if you're going with one other person, because the sides are not your typical smaller portions. They're actually pretty big. And they do have healthier options, vegetarian options, if you want to do that. This was my favorite dish. It was a chicken dish that had blistered tomatoes. It had some sort of a cream sauce with it. That was one that I actually didn't think I would like as much. I mean, it's a chicken dish. I don't really get that excited about those, but it was so good that I actually ordered it twice during my stay here. So I highly recommend that one. I know Kayla liked the scallops quite a bit, so make sure you try each one of those out. Now, there are some things that I won't even try, like octopus. That's a bridge too far for me, but Kayla, once again, said she absolutely loved it. So you're not just getting your typical run-of-the-mill, all-inclusive food. You can really explore and try some things that maybe you've never even tried before. One consistent thing that we saw pretty much every single day we were out here were the hummingbirds. The hummingbirds were always around the Sir House area. So you'll see several of those while you're dining. And it again, just makes for a really unique experience because I've never been in a place where you're just surrounded by something like hummingbirds. Moving on to dessert, this was part of our anniversary trip. So every evening, the desserts came with a happy anniversary chocolate on top. And who can beat that? This is my favorite dessert, by the way. It was a, a walnut, caramel, and vanilla ice cream in some kind of a cone. I don't know what it was. It was very, very good. But they let us celebrate our anniversary for an entire week. I thought that was really cool. And every time they came up to the table, they told us happy anniversary. Very thoughtful of them. I guess they had that in their notes somewhere. But again, attention to detail, great service. And when you're at a place that costs this much, those extras do go a long way, even though it's just something small. Now, one dessert that Kayla didn't really care for as much was the carrot cake, which is kind of surprising. I've never really had a bad carrot cake, but it was a little bit too rich uh, for her with the topping. So just something to keep in mind. Not everybody's perfect, right? I gave you some things that you should definitely try. The carrot cake, eh, you can maybe skip that one if you want to do that. Now, the cocktails at dinner, yes, we did have cocktails at dinner, including a black ant salt margarita that was spicy. It was very good. Get this margarita when you go there, you won't regret it. The breakfast was huge. It was huge. It'll fill you up for a long time. So you could basically just eat breakfast, grab a snack by the pool during the day if you wanted to do that, just a small snack, and then come to dinner and you would be fine. You will not need a big lunch if you come here for breakfast. This was a breakfast. This gigantic bowl of food was a breakfast. Now they are also open for lunch and it's open to the general public during lunch hours. However, at dinner time, you have to be a guest at the resort or they will not let you come in because there were some people that tried to come in that said that they wanted to stop by because they heard about the food. Again, the food's really good. However, they weren't able to get a table because they were not guests at the resort. So for the most part, the Sir House is exclusive to the resort and it should stay that way, I think, just because it's a very relaxing atmosphere. It's not overcrowded and the views, I don't know that you're gonna get a better view at any dinner that you go to. It was spectacular and this was us every single evening getting that view. Another dining option, this is my favorite dining option here, but I'm a sucker for barbecue. This was the Smokehouse. It's actually located at the bottom of Big Hill before you go up to the resort. So it's out of the way. You really want to take a shuttle to this. Don't try to walk to it because it's too steep uh, of a walk just to get some food and then you got to go back up again. You don't want to do that. Take the shuttle and have them bring you to the Smokehouse. It opened up at noon every day and the Smokehouse is also open to the general public. So this is something that you could go to whether you're a guest here or not. The food is very good. It is expensive. Barbecue places are very expensive. Kayla and I came here and ordered our food. It cost us over $80 between the two of us to get everything that we wanted. I recommend the pulled pork. They have a lot of different sauces there. And then also they have glass bottle Cokes and Sprites, which you can buy from the smokehouse and just charge it to your room and you can take those back with you. So if you wanted to just get a bunch of glass bottle sodas, which I think are a lot better anyway, load those up, take those back with you to the room, put them in your refrigerator, and you can have those for your whole trip. So long story short, I would recommend the Smokehouse. It was my favorite stop. We stopped here a couple of times, but it's definitely worth it. Just make sure that you get that shuttle to take you there. It'll save you a lot of headache and it'll save your legs. Trust me, it's a little bit far to go. All right, now let's move on to an area that I think a lot of people will be interested in and I'm talking about the pool area. And we're gonna get to some of the other water features of the resort, including the hot tub and the bathhouses. So just hang tight, we'll get there in just a minute. But when it comes to the pool, first of all, you do have a small bar here where you can pick up sodas, uh, water, you can order cocktails here. They also walk around the pool area to take your order if you want to do that. And this is really the main view for Ventana Big Sur. When I think Ventana Big Sur, this is the view that I'm going to remember. And we'll take a look at this a little bit closer in just a second. And that view is right off the pool area. But as we're staying by the pool, first of all, there are plenty of seats. It never felt like it was crowded here. 
I've been to some places where it feels crowded, you have to fight for chairs, you have to get there at six in the morning to claim your chair, or you will not get one. That was not the case here, so I did like that. In my opinion, and in Kayla's opinion as well, the pool was a little bit cooler, the water was a little bit cooler, which is interesting because it was so hot outside, you would have thought the water would be a little bit warmer. I would say it was somewhere around 83, 84 degrees. Uh, we have a heated pool at home that stays at about 87, 88 and we could tell a big difference in the water here. So we didn't actually get in the pool that much. And this is the view from one of the pool chairs that you can snag and get that awesome view of the ocean if you wanna take a look at that. It does stay pretty quiet around the pool most of the time. There were some dogs that were by the pool. This is a pet friendly property. However, also make sure your pets are friendly back. There was one dog that was kind of uh, causing a little bit of a scene by barking every now and then and growling when people would walk by and everybody had to give them the look like, hey, get your dog in order, all right? So long story short, it's a quiet, peaceful place. So just make sure that your pets are trained and aren't gonna disrupt people's quiet, peaceful time. In terms of food by the pool, the chips and salsa, the salsa is hot, man, it is hot. I love hot salsa though, so I'm a fan of that. But you can pick up any of this food you want. It doesn't cost extra. The fish tacos, Kayla said, were very good. I had a quesadilla that was good. One thing I would skip on the menu that I didn't really care for were the shishito peppers. They were kind of battered and it just wasn't great. So I would skip those. Definitely check out the chips and salsa and guacamole though. Those were very good. And this burger, if you eat it, you're not gonna eat a lot for dinner. Trust me, I did it and I couldn't hardly eat a thing at dinner. It will fill you up. Now let's get to probably my favorite part of this entire resort and that is the hot tub. This hot tub is one of my absolute favorites and I'm gonna show you why. It is humongous. It is huge. Okay, I'm six foot two. I don't get in hot tubs a lot of times at resorts or hotels because I feel like I'm taking up all the space. In this case, that's not gonna happen. You can turn the jets on or off. And the nice thing about this hot tub, it's actually very hot. I would say it's about 103 degrees. I mean, it, it was hot. We have a hot tub at home that we keep at 102, and this was hotter than that, all right? So it was about 103. And it's got an infinity edge with very powerful jets too. Here's a look over the edge. One thing that does kind of stink is you can see it does fog up the glass a little bit around the edge, but trust me, you don't want an infinity edge hot tub uh, on the side of a mountain and then just fall off, all right? So I appreciate the protection there <laughs> with the glass. That's not a bad thing, but just be aware that it does fog up every now and then. I'm gonna shut up for about 10 seconds and just let you enjoy the scenic view that I was taking in for most of my trip. There was a separate lounge seating area for the hot tub too, so if you just wanted to grab your chair over there, you could certainly do that. But I love the hot tub area, definitely recommend it. Let's get a closer up shot of the view that I was talking about a little bit earlier. This is right next to the pool area, and I just wanna give you a feel for what this looks like. This is a good place to come if you just wanna sit down, relax, take everything in for a second. And if you look over the edge of that beautiful view, you'll see a garden down at the bottom where they grow some of the food, some of the herbs that they're gonna use for the food that's on site. So we got to see some people working that while we were there, but pretty cool that they keep everything on site. You can also come and check out some of the Adirondack chairs, get you a cocktail, relax, not do anything, don't accomplish anything, don't try to work, just sit on your butt, take in the view and soak up the sun. Now from that view, if you turn around, you can see we're right back at the pool area. That's the social house up there where they have the game room area and there's also the spa. Now we're gonna go back up here. This is the seating area to the pool that is a little bit elevated that we were just looking at. One room that I never saw anybody go in was this sauna. It's here if you wanna use it. I just never saw anybody in here. And trust me, I spent a lot of time in this area. Never saw one person go into that door, but I'm sure it's lovely. Right next to that, you do have the spa. Now, Kayla and I each got a treatment here and we each love the service that we received. They're very friendly in here. The pricing, surprisingly compared to the price of the resort, wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. Now it's still gonna be more expensive than what most people are probably gonna wanna pay for a spa service in their local town or something like that. Everything's a little bit more expensive at a resort, but compared to what I thought it was gonna be, it wasn't bad at all. One thing that was a little disappointing with the spa was that the treatment room that you're in, it's very bright, right? There's a window in there, and you usually like to have a darker room when you're trying to relax. The other thing is the treatment room had a window that they had open at that time that opened up to the pool area. So while you're trying to relax, and get your massage, you're actually gonna hear people by the pool or you may hear a dog barking 
right out at the pool area, like I mentioned a little bit earlier. I wish the lights were a little bit darker. I wish it was a little bit more soundproof, but hey, maybe that's an improvement they can make later. All right, moving along, we're gonna head to the fitness center. This is about a minute and a half, two minute walk from the pool area, so very close and easy to get here from that area. And the only time that I came to the fitness center was to film this video. I did not get one single workout while I was here, so don't let me fool you. These ice machines, by the way, I do want to highlight these. These are uh, located throughout the property, and it's very handy if you have one of those Yeti coolers that I mentioned a little bit earlier. When you're heading out by the pool, just stop by those ice makers, and you'll be able to load up your Yeti cooler with ice and head down to the pool. But if you're going in the opposite direction and you want to get a workout, I was actually surprised by how much was in here. I didn't think they would have this much stuff uh, in this kind of resort because it doesn't really scream, you know, hey, this is a fitness resort. It's just more of an outdoor woodsy resort. But they had Pelotons, free weights, treadmills as well. Of course, it has to be surrounded by mirrors so that you can see how much progress you're making. There was never a ton of people in here, but hey, um, if you want to come in here and get a workout, it is here. And then there is this contraption. I don't know what this is. If you can leave that down in the comments and let me know what this is. I don't know if I'm supposed to swing on this thing, jump on it, pull on it. I don't know, but it's here if you want to use that for your workout. Right next to the fitness center, we're gonna run into the bathhouses. Now these were very interesting, okay? So I already mentioned how much I love the hot tub. The hot tub was running about 103 degrees. That's, that's a pretty good guess, I think. These bathhouses, they claim to be a little bit different than the hot tubs, but in my opinion, they were darn near identical. They were just as warm or just as hot as the hot tubs. They felt exactly the same. The jets felt very similar as well. The only difference is that the bathhouse has a little more seclusion in it, whereas the hot tub is kind of out in the open in the pool area. So there's a men's bathhouse and a women's bathhouse, and they connect in the center if you want to join up with someone else uh, that you're traveling with. You can certainly do that, or you can keep it separate if you want more privacy. So if you want privacy with jets and hot water, go to the bathhouse. If you want the exact water and jets, and you want to be close to the pool area, then just go to the regular hot tub. Between this and the hot tub, you should easily be able to relax. Now let's move on to some of the on-site activities, and there were quite a few things to do on-site that are free. There are some paid activities as well, such as falconry, axe throwing, several others. I do wish there were more free activities though, because it sounds kind of silly to me to charge someone $25, for example, to go through an axe throwing class when you're already charging so much for the resort anyway. Why not just add that as a free activity? I don't know, that's a minor complaint, but I wish they would do that. We really enjoyed the nature walk. It is a guided walk or hike. It's about two miles and you're going up in elevation and it was super hot on the day that we went. But it's really good because they do stop along the way in the shade. They talk about the trees and all the nature that you're seeing around you. So if you wanna get educated a little bit, on the area and the surroundings, this is a really good way to do it and also get a very good exercise. It usually happens in the morning before it gets really hot. They wanna to try to conclude the hike before it gets really, really hot because trust me, that sun really beats down on you up there. But you also get some really nice views. So if you wanted to get some good video or pictures, it's worth the hike just for that because you can see uh, areas that you otherwise wouldn't see from the resort. Even though you're already getting those good views from the resort, there's always more to see. So I recommend doing this hike and it's free. One activity that we really love that happens every evening is uh, roasting marshmallows and making s'mores. This is the area that has the pool table, uh, the board games and stuff like that. And you can just come in and grab your kits. They've got Reese cups, they've got marshmallows, they've got chocolates, graham crackers, they've got the marshmallow sticks as well. They've got a little bit of everything and you just pick up what you want and you go outside, right outside, and you'll see two different fire pit options. So you'll have a wood burning fire pit and then they also have a gas fire pit. And kids at home, this is just a quick lesson. If you have the choice between a wood burning fire pit or a gas fire pit to roast marshmallows or roast any food directly on the flame, always go for the wood burner. It tastes better and it won't have that weird kind of gas scent with it. So I would recommend the wood fire pit. However, the gas fire pit area had a really nice seating area around it. So something to consider. Obviously you have a little bit more smoke when you're dealing with a wood fire pit, but trust me, it is worth it to use it. And as you can see, that's me right there. It was the end of a long day. That was probably the day that we went hiking and I was just exhausted. So I was barely making it through but there's nothing more relaxing after you've had a really busy day than to sit around a fire pit, listen to the crackling of the wood, and just chill. Okay, so you're gonna think I'm absolutely goofy here, but I'm telling you, this one was a lot of fun. This is Bees and Big Sur. During this free program, which is located right next to the pool, you could grab your cocktail or grab your food and just walk over and go to this class on honey. 
They walk through the history of honey, tell you about bees, and let you do a honey tasting of different varieties of honey. Right now, what you need to do after you watch this video, go research or Google how bees operate in a hive. It will blow your mind. I was mind blown and I hadn't even had a cocktail that day and I found it interesting, okay? You're really gonna enjoy this. And they're also talking about how they want to have their hives on site to develop their own Ventana honey. So a really cool story. I highly recommend Bees and Big Sur. So if you didn't get a buzz by the pool, get a buzz and learn about bees by the pool uh, at Bees and Big Sur. You won't be disappointed. I really enjoyed this one. There's also some hiking that kind of circles the property as well. Um, this hike was, in my opinion, a little confusing because the signage wasn't great throughout. Between the fitness center and the pool, there's a little trail that you can take that basically circles the property and even goes around the Sur House area. But the signage was confusing. It was very steep. We didn't take our walking sticks with us. I would recommend doing one of the other hikes. That's just my opinion. And when talking about offsite activities we actually stopped by an information center that was just a mile or two down the road from the resort and they gave us a lot of information on some areas to check out one of those being Pfeiffer Beach. Pfeiffer Beach is famous for its purple sand yes it is purple sand and we'll show you that in just a second but there's a lot of great scenery here and it's a great place to take pictures. Something to keep in mind is that it costs $12 a day to park for Pfeiffer Beach and they limit the amount of cars that can come in every day. The turnoff is very hard to find, and when you do find it, you have to take about a two or three mile ride on a very narrow, bumpy ride, and you may get all the way out there and realize that all the parking spaces are taken up and you have to drive right back out because there's no way to know until you get out there. So keep in mind, if you wanna go there, you'll wanna go early because the spots will fill up. Parking is extremely limited. They will turn you away. And when we went out here, it was very, very windy, but also very scenic. It was some of my favorite scenery that we saw the entire time we were here on the trip. It's also home to the famous Keyhole Arch. So if you wanna get some cool pictures there, this is a good place to do it. It's something that you're not gonna see in a lot of other places. So while you're here, why not go ahead and stop by and do that? So you can see there's some of the famous purple sand. And I was kind of skeptical. I was like, okay, yeah, purple sand. Sure thing, it's actually purple. And one really interesting thing about the purple sand though is it appears to only be on the surface. So when you dig a little bit under the purple sand, it looks like regular colored sand. So it's really interesting how you'll see these stretches or these splatters of just purple sand in different places. It's really unique to see it, very neat. I would recommend checking out Pfeiffer Beach. It was pretty cool. Another recommendation that we got from the Information Center was to head to Andrew Malera State Park for a hike. Now this is an eight and a half mile hike that we went on. There are shorter hikes in Andrew Malera State Park, but we went on one that involved the Ridge Trail and the Panorama Trail. It's basically just a big loop along the ridges and you get some amazing views. However, you will also get a very hardcore workout in my opinion. It took us about four and a half hours to hike this and you wanna make sure that you pack lots of water. We didn't pack enough, okay? We each had our 750 ml bottles uh, that we talked about that came in the room and we also took a boxed water each which came from the room and we ran out about three quarters of the way through and just had to tough it out. Pack more than you think you're gonna need. This also costs money to park and stay there if you wanna do that, but in my opinion, it's worth it. So you can do the loop in one of two ways, uh, depending on how you wanna start the circle. If I were you, I would start on the ridge trail, and when you get up to the peak, you'll then go down Panorama Trail. The reason I would do it that way is because when you come down the Panorama Trail, you'll be able to get some awesome views of the ocean and the scenery as you're walking down. It's gonna be a little bit more obstructed if you start the other way around. The ocean and the view is gonna to be towards your back and you're not gonna get that good of a view. I would highly recommend doing this trail if you wanna get a good workout. The views are some of my favorites and when I think of my favorite memories of this trip, I am gonna remember what I saw on this trail. So again, start on the Ridge Trail and finish on the Panorama Trail and it's just one big loop. You won't be disappointed. You can thank me later. You'll absolutely love it. If you wanted to do a little bit of shopping before you head home, Kayla recommends the Phoenix Shop. Now this was just a little ways down the road from the resort, but it's a boutique style clothing store. They have jade jewelry. She picked up these jade earrings there. And this dress that you see in the picture from our latest Disney cruise on the Disney Wish. So you wanna make sure you check that out. And hey, look, I know I was dogging you guys a little bit earlier, but this is a pet friendly resort. And there were some beautiful dogs on the property. So don't hesitate to bring your furry friends with you. They'll have a lot of fun here. 
being outside. There's a lot of area to roam around and they're not gonna feel cramped up if they're traveling with you. All right, so the big question is at the end of the day, what do I think about this resort and the stay? I absolutely loved it here. It was a great property, very unique property. It costs close to $20,000. If we were to pay cash for a six night stay, would I pay cash for that? No, I would not. Would I use points for the stay? Absolutely I would. Some of my favorite things about the property were first the hot tub. The food was far above what I thought it was gonna be. The scenery is some of the best I've ever seen. The service went above and beyond, no questions asked, always there to help. It was just quiet and peaceful as well. Just a really good mix of everything. Some changes that I would like to see, I wish the pool was a little bit warmer. I wish there were more activities included. More of a menu at the pool. The happy hour at the pool I think would be a good idea. I wish the spa room wasn't open to the pool area either, but hey, that's okay. Overall, I really enjoyed the property. It's very unique. I don't think you'll be disappointed if you stay here. If you do like these kind of reviews and want to see more in the future, don't forget to be awesome. Give me a big thumbs up on the video and subscribe to the channel. You will always get an honest review from me. I'm going to tell you the good and the bad, and then you can make the decision. I will never go out and just give you all the fluff that you'll see in some other places. You're going to get the real deal here. So I always make sure that I provide detailed quality content for you. So I hope you appreciate that. And until the next time, it is adios, Ventana Big Sur. We're heading home, and I look forward to seeing all of you on the next episode. We'll see you soon.